Let us do the review of the movie W by Oliver Stone. Uh, I'd like Anna to go first, uh, mm -hmm. since uh, we promised that you'd be doing the review, but I haven't seen it as well, so I'm going to weigh in in a little bit. So what do you think, Anna? Um, I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. I didn't hate it. I was totally in the middle. Um, and the reason why is I went to the movie expecting a bush bashing. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I expected, and to be honest with you, that's what I wanted. I wanted a documentary style, you know, type of movie where it's just constant, you know, oh, I hate Bush. I can't believe he did that. But at the end of the movie, I mean, as much as people are going to hate hearing this, I felt a tiny, tiny bit of sympathy for Bush. Because for the first time ever, I was forced to look at him as a human being. Anna, I think you just paid the highest compliment to Oliver Stone. I really do. Uh -huh. Because he's going to think, good, That's I wanted you to understand this is a real, live human being. It's not some sort of caricature uh, one way or another. He's not some sort of hero, as some Republicans see him, although I don't know if anyone still thinks that in the country. Mm -hmm. And he's not some sort of, uh, you know, this evil figure or caricature, uh, as some liberals might say. Right, say, right. right. And it's funny because I saw the same exact thing, and I agree with you on that, but I had the exact opposite reaction to it. Uh, not the exact opposite because I want to come back to your point about sympathy and empathy in a second, mm -hmm. right? But the flip side of that is I was like, you know, I've called him a moron, I don't know how many times, a hundred times on the show. But when you watch his interactions with other people in real life circumstances right. and you get the context rather than just at a press conference or just knowing his actions, etc., right? Mm -hmm. You think, oh my God, he's dumber than I thought. <laughs> no, no, he really is. I mean, especially this scene right here when they're hazing him uh, for the fraternity, and he's just completely idiotic. He's just completely idiotic. When he goes to jail and he calls his father from jail, and you just hear the way he talks, you're just like, wow, I can't believe how stupid this man is. And But they did a great job of explaining how he got to where he was, despite the fact that he was right, stupid. Right. And at the end, you're right, there is sympathy for him. Uh, and it's sympathy because you're like, oh, this poor, dumb son of a bitch. Exactly. Doesn't know what he got himself into because he's so dumb, he doesn't even get it. Exactly. That's exactly the way I felt at the end of the movie. By the way, right. Scott McClellan has already uh, come out and said, that's a pretty accurate de depiction of what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Scott McClellan wasn't with Bush his whole life, and now he's, uh, you know, not with the Bush administration anymore, and he's had a falling out. So take that for what it's worth. But they base this on a number of books from inside sources, and I know for a fact that 80 to 90 percent of what I saw were real life events because we covered them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have some of the quotes he said in the movie in the sound machine. If I could ever get the sound machine to work. <laughs> okay, now so given that it's this accurate a a depiction. Uh, those cabinet meetings, you look and you go, oh, God, Bush, 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 you're so out of your league. You're so stupid. Exactly. Don't you see what Cheney's doing? Exactly. He's so stupid and ignorant that he totally allows Cheney to completely manipulate him. And, you know, Cheney totally takes advantage of the situation, and it just drives you crazy. And if, you know, this settles, if you believe that the movie is an accurate depiction of what happened, mm -hmm. this settles the debate that we've been having on this show for at least six years, which is stupid or evil. And I've always been on the side of stupid. And I feel, again, if you believe the movie, then I'm vindicated. Right. Okay. Because he's not, at the end, you, it's not like he thought, yeah, I'll kill all those Iraqis and I don't give a damn about it. He really thought it was going to be easy because he's a schmuck. And he really thought that there weren't going to be that much consequences. And he doesn't get it, man. One of the most powerful parts of the movie is he goes and talks to the uh, guys who, soldiers, who've been burned oh, or, yeah. you know, had their limbs amputated at Walter Reed, presumably he's talking to them. And you see the, the Hispanic soldier with yes. his face burned yes. off, half his face burned off. And then in the next scene or the next couple of scenes, Bush says he's giving up desserts as a way to, you know, also yes. sacrifice during the war. And he doesn't get how stupid that is. Exactly. And how pathetic exactly. that is. And then in another scene, he's with Laura in the White House, and it's so plush. You know, and they're in this gorgeous bed in the gorgeous bedroom next to the fireplace. And he's like, you know, Laura, I just think they're so tough on me, and they don't get it. I really care. And da da da. And you think to yourself, maybe he does care. But he. He doesn't understand that him sitting in his gorgeous place, not affected at all, cannot be equated to the guy who had his face burned off because of his dumb ass decision. Exactly. And so 
in the beginning, I walk out of the movie because feeling a little mixed about it. Because right. why? Because it's real life people. And it almost feels like an SNL skit in the beginning because it's like a caricature. You see the robe, and you're like, I know what the real robe looks like, and that guy looks kind of like a clown, right? right, right. And robe looks like a clown, but still, you know? Mm -hmm. And some uh, of the acting in the movie was preposterous. Condoleezza Rice, how terrible was it? She was awful. Condoleezza Rice was terrible. Tandy Newton plays her. Yes, And terrible. She did this accent like this, and she was like this. I was like, what are you doing? You're ruining the movie. But it's Oliver Stone's fault, man. Get her under control. No. <laughs> she was You're like, terrible. what is that? It's just distracting. She was so bad. And the guy who played Colin Powell, who was otherwise a great actor, was also really mediocre. But Josh Brolin was very good as W. Yes. And a couple of scenes, I was like, man, that kind of looks like him, too. Mm -hmm. He's got that deer in the headlights look like, you know, that Bush has. And Richard Dreyfuss, I didn't was wasn't sure could play Cheney. I was like, I don't see the connection. But he did a great job playing Cheney. Definitely. The thing, but I think it's an important movie. I think you really should see it. I do. I think not just important, but it's interesting. You keep thinking about it after the movie's over, right? right? The final thing on it is that as he's sitting in those meetings and he uses the nicknames, like we all know he uses the nicknames, but you don't get a sense of how stupid it is. Like Rummy. Yeah, until you see him doing it, mm -hmm. right? And he's. Cheney, he calls him Vice, right? Mm -hmm. At first you think like Vice, that's the one of his less dumb right. nicknames, right? But here's Dick Cheney, and he's like, hey, Vice, <laughs> what do you think about that? And you're like, oh, you didn't just call him Vice. I mean, you're talking about the invasion of Iraq where hundreds of thousands of people are going to die. You didn't just call that guy Vice, did you? You know, and then Rummy and Stretch and this and that, and then, and then he uses my favorite nickname of all time, talking about Vladimir Putin, Pooty Putin. How can you call the leader of Russia Pooty Poot? How phenomenally dumb are you? And I come out of that movie I thinking, we can't do it again. We can't elect someone this dumb again. It has tremendous consequences, as you see in the movie. All those people die, right? 